Hi everybody, I am Sheshan. Just I am going to give the embedded uh, domain you already discussed about in previous sessions. Embedded domain differentiation and as well as uh, the basic introduction about embedded. Now uh, with that I am continuing with uh, how the microprocessors and microcontrollers are more important towards embedded technology. So you already know about the microprocessor electronic system design uh, with processor because which is very complicated for designing and developing your application and whereas your microcontrollers are very popular in embedded technology because it become one chip solution for everything nowadays okay so this one chip solution means which is extremely working for uh, a dedicated functionality so once I am taking one microcontroller for one application purpose which is purely designed for a specific purpose okay once I am taking a controller uh, which has all inbuilt things which is providing one processor and which is providing some memory for you and along with this we have so many uh, so many features within this as a controller uh, which is providing IO ports for you which is providing memory for you which is providing processor inbuilt along with this which is providing some other features and once if you see the general electronic application which is a combination of uh, various inputs and various outputs so as the inputs uh, what you consider which is discussed in previous session uh, which is like keypad keyboard sensors or anything now this controller is most suggestible for handling all these inputs and outputs directly without having any KPIs like in case of processor and without having any uh, memory so there is no need of even memory also for external purpose once you are taking controller this memory is also inbuilt for your device okay so this memory is supporting for us storing the application program inbuilt and uh, working with IO ports are also inbuilt with your device so which is easy to access for handling any input and output peripherals like you people can connect even modems also and coming to output side you people can directly work with displays in the case of controllers so you people can directly connect some uh, motor drivers or motor units also and some cases you people can connect even electrical loads also so this is the best way uh, to access any input output port with your controller that's what controllers are very popular in embedded technology and coming to the internal functioning block diagram of your microcontroller uh, which is which is also introduced by the intel corporation in 1983 so the first microcontroller from intel corporation which is introduced in 1983 the first microcontroller from uh, intel which is 8 bit generation and here also you people have some advanced generations with your controller families which is 16 bit and 32 bit and coming to 8 bit families you have 8031 8051 like this and coming to 16 bit families you have like PIC families PIC 24 series uh, which is from microchip actually and coming to 32 bit you have ARM controllers so these are the different generations of controller families in our microcontrollers okay so why these controllers are only popular in embedded technology rather than processors which you have to know clearly so further <coughs> you have to know clearly the block diagram of your microcontroller which is very important uh, you want to start learning of microcontroller uh, you people have to uh, know first block diagram why the people will always teach in the first class block diagram only why because the block diagram the block diagram of your microcontroller which is having internal blocks cpu and ram rom ivo ports and timers counters interrupts and serial port so these are the various blocks present with your controller uh, which is providing in from basic microcontroller the basic microcontroller which is providing all these internal uh, features for your uh, applications purpose and this is your basic 8051 microcontroller block diagram 
and this from this chrome diagram what you are expecting and what are the things you have to know clearly the first thing which is cpu so here cpu stands for central processing unit about cpu you people have to learn three important points one is bit capacity of the processor and second thing is architecture and third one is registers so these are the three important points about uh, any cpu or any processor once you study about processor you will learn these three important points about any processor the first one bit capacity and second one architecture and third one registers so what the bit capacity is going to decide for you so the bit capacity of your processor which is deciding the microcontroller bit capacity uh, how many binary bits it can handle at a time okay so for all this 8051 families they are going to use x86 based processors as a cpu that's what you should know the relation between processor and controller after processors the people started designing controllers because every processor every controller consists of one internal processor compulsory okay as a cpu and this processor only deciding the controller bit capacity because this 86 families have 8 bit handling cap capability so you can decide microcontroller is a 8 bit microcontroller based on this only and next thing is architecture and what about architecture generally so architecture means the cpu is connected with all these peripherals with the help of the two buses the cpu is going to use two buses one is address bus and and then one is data bus so the two buses of your processor which is connecting with all these peripherals based on architecture point of view and here architectures are two types one is harvard and second one is van neumann so the two architectures of your processors which are two different architectures because manufacturers can decide they can design a process a controller from any one of this architecture okay here what is the difference between harvard architecture and van neumann architecture harvard architecture means you people will find two different sizes of address bus and data bus so in the case of harvard architecture you people will find two different sizes for both address bus and data bus and generally how can you define your address address means if you want to define the address so what way the people will decide define the address is here name of the location so name of the location means address and what way you can decide define the data here so value of the location so that means once the cpu wants to access anything here first it will use it address bus so this address bus which is help us for accessing the peripheral with the help of name because as a group of uh, class people whenever i want to access a particular person here then i am using what i am going to use his name or her name the same way cpu has different features here cpu has different peripherals here cpu wants to talk with anything here it will use address bus so the cpu call any peripheral with the help of address bus so that's what address bus is always unidirectional and coming to the data bus so what what is the de definition of data here which is a value of the location so value of the location means the information present in the peripheral how to access with your cpu with the help of data bus so the data bus which is bidirectional the data bus which is used to get the information from the specified location the address bus which is helping us access the peripheral and data bus which is helping us access the information from the specified location so let's say address bus which is always from cpu to peripheral and data bus they can share their information from peripheral to cpu or cpu to peripheral and we want to represent in a diagrammatic way so if it is a location this is the name of the location which is defined as address here and whatever the value present in this location which is data you can define as the uh, this is a data okay the name which is defined as address and value is defined as data that is the two important things about address and data so once you are finding the two different sizes of address bus and data bus then the architecture is harvard and once you are finding same size of address bus and data bus 
then that is your van newman architecture so in the case of van newman architecture the two buses sizes are same and in the case of van newman architecture address bus and data bus sizes are same and in the case of forward architecture the two buses sizes are different okay so what is the importance of knowing address bus size and data bus size here address bus is if i am telling address bus is a 16 bit so it will clear you how many locations i can access like this so if it is a 16 bit address bus i can access 2 power 16 locations so 2 power 16 locations means so what is your 2 power 16 value which is 65536 so I can access the location from 0 to 65,535 and what is the importance of knowing data bus so this data bus size is which is going to clear you how much value I can store here maximum so if it is a 8 bit I can store maximum value from 0 to 255 why because 2 power 8 means 256 if we start with 0 the last value is 255 so that is the importance of knowing address bus and data wise towards the architecture point of view. So for that reason, for this reason, the people will more concentrate on architecture point of view. By knowing the architecture of processor, you people can understand what is the memory accessible capacity of the processors. Okay, and the same thing you can decide for your control and memory capabilities also. That is what memory architecture, CPU architecture point of view. This is the more important things either it is following Harvard or Van Newman that is about your architecture and what about registers every processor will provide you some some kinds of registers like A, B, C, D like this so here the basic processors like if you think about 8085 and 8086 they are giving registers like A, B, C, D for you and in the case of 8086 you will find A, H, B, H, A, L, B, L like this so the people will have different register names and these registers are which are helping us to store the information temporarily okay so any register if you take they are giving from a starting alphabetic letters from your english language so every register which help us for storing the information temporarily so these are the three important points about any processor inside of your controller the first thing is bit capacity and second thing is architecture and third one is registers so in the case of bit capacity point of view, you have to know clearly how many bits it can handle at a time. And in the case of architecture point of view, we have to concentrate on, on address bus sizes and data bus sizes. Because of these two buses, you people can decide the accessibility of memory and accessibility of data for each location. And coming to registers, which are providing some basic registers, A, B, C, D, like this. So these are the three important points about any CPU from your microcontroller family and next thing about RAM so how this RAM help us in our microcontrollers so coming to the ROM block RAM stands for read only uh, <coughs> random access memory so this RAM which is help us to store the information temporarily so and your 8051 family with respect to 8051 families this ram memory which is called as data memory also once you declare any variable in the program uh, the variable access the memory from ram only always okay like the people will decide character integer or uh, float if you take any data type in the program these variables access the memory from ram in the microcontrollers and this ram memory which is specially called as data memory in microcontrollers that is more important and you people can use a specific keyword for access the RAM particularly you can use data keyword in front of your variable declaration suppose you are declaring data unsigned character i then the i variable which is specifically occupies the RAM location from your device so that is about RAM and next, next feature ROM. So what about ROM memory and how help us? Just I am giving the brief introduction about each block and the purpose of each block from your microcontroller. And coming to ROM which is read only memory and this ROM memory which help us to store the data permanently. Any information if you want to store permanently then you can use this ROM block. And this 
raw memory which is called as core memory in microcontrollers and if you develop any program where we are going to store in microcontrollers in raw memory only so that is the importance of uh, ROM here. Next, what about I/O ports? And I/O ports are very important uh, for accessing peripherals from your microcontroller. So these uh, these I/O ports which are help us to access the peripherals like sensors, keypad, etc., motors, anything you can connect with the help of I/O ports only. Suppose you don't have this I/O port feature from your device, which is not possible to connect any peripheral with your controller. So that is the important thing about uh, I/O port purpose in the microcontrollers. Next, what about timers counters? Timers are very important uh, because once you want to make the application towards time operations, like I want to control some load from this time to this time, like we want to control your load from morning nine to evening five. So then you people can access this timers feature from your microcontroller. Timers are very helpers for working with the microcontroller. Timers are going to create accurate time delays. So whenever your application requires some accurate time delay, then you can uh, you can use this timers concept from your microcontroller. And then what about counters? The counters are which help us to count an external events from your device. So whenever you are looking for access any counter based operations, then you can use this counter feature from your device. So that is the most important thing about timers and counters. Next, what about interrupts? Generally, interrupt means which is the unwanted signal, and all interrupts how you people will read, uh, which is going to, uh, which is a disturbing signal or which is an unwanted signal for uh, electronics. But in the microprocessors or microcontrollers, they are telling interrupt is a very important feature and which is very uh, more important towards operating system level applications or for general applications also. So these interrupts are very important here. Why? Because so once you are giving one interrupt signal to the device, it will stop the main program execution and it will go for uh, another execution. Once I am giving one interrupt signal to the device, suppose this is the main program. Once you are giving this external signal from the to the device, it will stop. This is the interrupt signal. It will stop this program execution and it will come for ISR. So this ISR, which is interrupt service routine, it stops your main program execution and it will come for ISR. Once finishing of this interrupt service routine, and it will come back for main program. And so these interrupts are very important towards uh, real-time applications. The interrupt service routines, which are applicable for your device, for all priority-based tasks in your applications. So the priority-based tasks are very important towards electronics like uh, take the example suppose one doctor is operating eight patients with a regular time like uh, he checking every one hour eight patients uh, for every time he is going to the order one two three like this suppose he checking third person some eighth person needs some emergency he has to go immediately suppose if you go in order he will go for some dangerous situation uh, the same task I am assigning to electronic device. So how the electronic device will behave in that particular situation? So based on interrupt programming. Okay. Otherwise, the best example if you go for ATM mission. So once before swiping your ATM card, which is showing some advertisements. This is the task which is already running with your device. Once you swipe the card, then it stops your advertisements and it immediately comes to the transaction. So that is also ISR routine for your microcontroller because their transaction is an important task to the user. And advertisements is, suppose if anyone is not operating your ATM machine, then it will start advertising your ads. The same way, so microcontrollers have this best feature with your microcontrollers, interrupts are very important towards real-time application. That is the importance of interrupts here. And what about serial port? And how the serial port help us in real-time application? Generally, real-time applications, for real-time application, serial port is very important, which is used to communicate with peripherals and as well as... <coughs> so whenever you want to communicate with PC and microcontroller or PC with modems, so people will depend on this serial port programming. Okay, so that is the main intention to know the purpose of each and every block with your microcontroller block diagram.
Thank you.